Hello, and welcome to Final Show Films. I'm John, the executive producer here, and I've got a few pre-show notes for you. First, a reminder. All of the content we produce is available on our website at finalshowfilms.com, as well as youtube.com slash sensetaku, sensetaku.podbean.com, twitch.tv slash sensetaku, and on iTunes. We are only able to do the things we do thanks to the kind support of our Patreon donors. We give a special shout out to our $25 tier supporters, Antitonic and Cat Waterflame. If you'd like to support us that way, be sure to check it out. Secondly, a thank you to the folks over at 411mania.com. They produce articles and content related to wrestling, MMA, movies, music, and gaming. Go check them out. We appreciate their support as well. And lastly, be sure to subscribe, comment, and rate, if possible, wherever you listen to or watch our content. It helps us know what you like, what you don't like, and helps us make more content. Feedback is always appreciated. With all that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy. With Dick, our live. With that lovely beginning of thing from Jeremy. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm John, the Game Master for the evening for Grand Terra Rebirth, episode 20. With me today is William. Hi, I'm William, and I'm playing Baldrin Ironhand, Dwarven Cleric of the Forge. And Jeremy. Hi, I'm Jeremy. I am playing Selena, Fire Genasi, uh, Wild Maid Sorceress. And Aaron. Hi, I'm Aaron, and I will be playing Actorsol, the Elven Ranger. And Cody. Hi, I'm Cody. I'm playing Corbin, the human battle master. And Sarah. Hello, I'm Sarah, and I play Five, and she is the Phoenix Soul Sorcerer. And when last we left our adventurers, the <laughs> world got bigger. Well, lots of different things happened. Um, the group entered into the tower. Well, part of the group entered into the Tower of the Gods to try to see what's going on in there. Um, what they found was an interesting space crafted from their subconscious soul, according to the giant flaming sloth that met them at the door. Uh, upon venturing further in, they found a task set before them to retrieve a small bit of metal rod uh, from what seemed to be some sort of dungeon suffering from demonic corruption that was constructed around them. Uh, as once they accepted the task by placing by standing near a pedestal that seemed to be the start line, two of the group, uh, uh, Kaylin and Five, were rendered into uh, object goals rather than assistance going through the dungeon uh, by the dungeon itself for whatever reason. And upon completion, the group that was the, in the tower saw witnessed the plane shaper. Uh, granting the four of Hope, Boldrin, Selena, and Agrasol, who had completed the trial, a blessing, and also expanding the world, uh, driving back the abyss to reveal all new mountain ranges and ocean and land. And, as they exited a tower, an airship that seems to have come from the far-off land of Ilanora, um, delivering goods, as was scheduled on their behalf. There was some confusion there, as these people seemed to not realize that they came out of the abyss, uh, having just come out themselves. Uh, feeling fairly celebratory, the group returned to the Adventurers Guild to congratulate themselves and uh, have some drinks, where they met with the uh, with the uh, uh, Valor Sanguinis, the group of adventurers that had helped them previously in another area, um, and where uh, uh, Adolfo, the bard, uh, posed the question of perhaps the group would like to assist him now that the world has gotten bigger in traveling to the land of Ilanora uh, and seeing if they can't exact some revenge on one Kalen of the Shifting Sands. To which mm. Selina immediately jumped up and said, Yes! And that's, well, that will be where we pick up, but first... Corbin. Yes. So you have joined. You rejoined with the Kultiran battle priests, um, and began your journey south. Um, about well, southeast. About <coughs> three to two and a half to three hours after you left Kor, you notice something strange. There is a pulse 
sort of like a, a, a pulse of energy echoing off the tower. And as sort of you and your entire group look back to look at it, you see this ripple of radiant light just erupt from the tower itself, shooting out overhead and spreading out across the land. Following it with your eyes, you see it connect with the edge of the world where the abyss lies and push it back, revealing a set of mountain range, a mountain range that seems to curl around the known land of Kor and more sky and air beyond it. The land now has a finite end to it where the abyss once was. You see that uh, the forest to the south expands out to meet this mountain range. Looking to the left, you see more mountains off in the distance. Um, and also coming from the south, above the mountains, you see a large ship flying through the air. No sail or anything like that, but four pods hanging off the front and back, two on the front, two on the back, wherein large blue crystals sort of hover and glow with magical energy and appear to be the thing keeping this ship aloft as it flies towards Korra at a fairly decent speed. I'm going to grab my water skin. I'm going to pop it open. I'm gonna look at the rangers or the the Coronite battle priests, or the Coltier and battle priests, and just you guys didn't put anything. Are you? You see that, right? And I'm gonna point up at the. Yeah, they seem just as surprised as you. Uh, no, we didn't. <laughs> They're also checking their like water <laughs> to make sure nothing got in it. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, uh, I'm not fuck. certain what that is. Once we get to the trial location, we'll send a messenger back to core and see what that was. All right. Yeah. That's fucking weird. Uh, they slightly disturbed by what you've seen. The group continues on. And you eventually find yourself spending the next few days in rigorous training. Uh, over the course of those, over the course of that training, as you get the, as you get lessons you had previously learned beaten the fuck out of you, and new lessons instilled, um, you do, the, the 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 training grounds do receive word that apparently some adventurers had entered the Tower of the Gods, and that was the result of that. It seems the abyss has been pushed back to a much further distance, and new lands have revealed themselves from within. And there's an airship. Shit. And there's an airship now uh, at at core, hailing from some place called Illinora, which some people in core do remember, do have memories of. Um, so. Huh. All right. So, oh, you're training. The rest yep. of you, you're back at the Adventurer's Guild drinking. Yup. Uh, Agdrasol, <laughs> you've just returned. Yes, from, I am. Agdrasol, <laughs> you've just returned from talking with the airship captain. Um, and, and I hear this conversation about how we're going to brutally torture somebody. Yes. Adolfo and Selena are having a conversation about how they are going to exact their revenge on some individual named Kalen. Okay. As Boldrin just kind of like puts a puts his face in one of his hands and just <laughs> looking over at Boldrin. I don't do not tell me you disapprove, my friend, of Delivering justice to a man who so heinously has ended the lives of many, including my beloved. In justice, wise. justice is all well and good, but are you doing this for justice or are you doing this for vengeance? Who uh, when, gives a fuck? When I find the two are in line, I do them for both. I often find that vengeance has a funny way of outweighing justice in many people. Well, I am a multi-talented individual. I mean, does the person... If, if the person has done... If 
theoretically, the person has done this level of terrible things. Don't they deserve to to be stopped and punished and etc.? Yes, but it's no, no, no. But and where does that stop? And we see eventual that destruction stops of it with the person. <laughs> Does it really? Or does it stop with the next person afterward or the 15 people you go through to get to the it? organization? Yeah, I mean, that's on that's on the person. That's on the individual. This dealing with this fucker. Is on that person. If you know what? Theoretically, his actions, if, his actions are on him. Yeah. The bodies that you leave in your wake will be on you. Uh-huh. We celebrate tonight. We'll talk about this tomorrow. Sounds good to me. I am already three cups through the way of celebration. And he says, pouring a fourth. <laughs> and silence reigns in the guild hall. <laughs> I mean, Selena's actually in a good mood for once. Selena and Aldolfo continue drinking. Yes. Agrisol will make light conversation with people and drink quite a bit. Sure. There's, there are a number of adventurers in there you can make light conversation with. Uh, many of Valor Sanguinis is also there, though not all of them are drinking as heavily as Adolfo. Um, if there's anyone any of you would like to speak with individually, or if not, uh, you eventually drink yourselves into a state of rest being a requirement and pass the fuck out in various places. Probably in the guild hall because I don't technically have a room here. Yeah. Well, five in Baldrin, is there anything you guys are doing before turning in? Nope. Not nope. really. Alright. Nope. Oh, you all rest for the evening. <sighs> Some of you in a tavern, very in various states of inebriation. One of you on a training field in a severe state of exhaustion and injury. And the next day rises. Some of you with a hangover. So, the morning comes, you all wake up. Yep. You find yourselves in various places. Corbin, you continue your training mm -hmm. for the second day. Selena Baldrin, Agdrasol in five. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Ugh. She's yeah. down it she's down in, in the main uh, uh the main hall fairly early, bright eyed and bushy tailed. She's energized. Those of Valor Sanguinis are in the hall in various states of disarray. Um, Fyodor is the only one of them that seems fairly put together, but Fyodor always seems fairly put together, being a giant minotaur. Uh, Selena's down there, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. Agrisol yep. wakes up at a table. Probably yeah. the same table. Morning, sunshine. <sighs> oh, God, is it morning? Fuck. It is morning. I was gonna... Mm. Whatever. I mean, I could, I could make various jokes about disgusting food styles, but I, I, I'm not feeling that mean today, so... Here, have some tea. Thanks. I'll take caffeine, I will. The, the pair of you feel a cold wind as the door opens. And the members of uh, the best policy walk in, actually. Um, Sharoon leading his various array of typically considered monstrous individuals uh, into the guild. They are all adventurers, after all. Um, they make light conversation with people as they pass by. Seeing Adrasol in the state Adrasol is in, the ethereal, unnerving presence of Screech floats over. Hey, Screech. 
and wordlessly places a cold metallic hand on Agdrasol's back. And you feel a shudder run through your body as your hangover oh. goes away. Screech Bang. plus a restoration. Screech pulls his hand away. Floats past. Black. Caffeine. What up, folks? Baldrin, you eventually get down there as well. Five, supposedly, also. Yeah. Baldrin comes down in full armor, fully already geared up. Spear on... Spear being used as a walking stick. Seat breaker in his bag of holding. Mm -hmm. okay. You all gather together. Yep. And presumably conversation of some kind is had. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so. How's everyone what? doing? I'm great. Five looks at all the people that are gathered there, decides she doesn't want to see or talk to any of them, and goes to try to find that dragon guy again. Okay. So Five comes down, looks at you all, shrugs, and walks out the door. Meh. Good luck, Five. <clears throat> so, what's ah. the plan? How um, we do this? I was hoping that we could talk about that in some privacy, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, I assume we can, like, find a room or a side room or something at the guild hall? Yep. Cool. Easily enough. We need to go back into the tower. Okay. We can do that done. eventually. Still border. It's not. We're still leaving things half done. But I understand that there's impulse to explore what we've already got and someone you want to find. Mm-hmm. Look, once we help Adolfo with this, I am down for whatever. Um, uh, we want to go back in the tower. We want to... Whatever. I'm totally good with it. Um... This is just kind of... I feel like there's a sense of urgency here. Okay. Okay. I'm assuming Adolfo is also here. Uh, not if you guys didn't bring him with you. I didn't. I didn't. He is out there in the... Sort of the, the, the area with the rest of his party. Okay. There's decent odds that... The airship that came into town... Um, is headed back heck, to Eleonora. So much as Eleonora may or may not exist at this time. Uh, if it exists, they're heading back there and they know where it is, which seems like a decent enough reason to go with them because they are interested in having some essentially local help explaining what's going on. And they don't seem opposed to taking on some passengers. <clears throat> Here's my question. Where does it stop? You've got a guy you want dead. Who and what mm -hmm. are you going to go through to get there? And once you're done, are you going to be able to put it down? Or are you going to have to keep... All right. <clears throat> if we really want to get into this, without going into all of the sordid details, 
A long, long time ago. Well, not that long ago. Maybe that long ago. It's hard to tell. You know how this fucking shit works. Um, but I resolved and had a had a made a promise to someone. That I was gonna find this shit stain, and I was gonna make sure that they couldn't, do, they could not do anything bad to anyone else again. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna make any promises I can't keep. So I'm not going to say that no one's going to get hurt in the crossfire. I'll say I'm going to try real. Uh, I will try real, real hard to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, but this is significantly important to me. Once it's done, I'm serious. Once once I'm done with this with, with this fucker, we'll go and do whatever. We will go and and chase after gods or 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 or, or, or sit on a I don't care anything. That's what I'm worried about. Fine. If this is that important to you. I'll do what I can to help. Thank you. Aldrin? I forged this bond. Someone's got to make sure you try not to... Uh... Become the thing you're hunting. Well, if I do, then you can kill me. I'd like it to not come to that. Oh, ideally, me too. I like living. But that's going to be... We are all responsible for our choices in life. And if that's what has to, if we come to a point where that's what has to happen at some point, then best of luck to you. I'd say do it, but I think at that point I'll be too far gone and I will be actively trying to prevent my death. You know how it works. Um, so yeah. Um, <sighs> well, then let's get going. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, uh, they may the be odds? coming by the Adventures Hall. I told them to look for either myself or you, though they were, they were at the Chiamberit, um, putting in some paper or trying to sort their situation out, given city is not currently equipped for airships. Cool. Let's go talk to Adolfo, see if he I... has plans. Or see if he has, a, has an idea of where we should go. I've got a few things to wrap up in the city before we leave, if you oh, for sure. want to check in and see if he has alternate ways he'd like to get there, stuff like that. Yeah, he may have a whole, he may have this whole thing mapped out. Yeah. I wonder, uh... I really want to ride an airship, but... This oh, is me your, too. Your story, so... Me I too. Wonder, yeah, I, I wonder how we get there. I wonder if the Coltarian battle priests have, uh, figured out what's happened to the border and what they're going to be doing with that now. Don't the Coltarian battle priests add their temple... Uh, they're currently they're at a war camp. 
You were told oh. to be at a war camp south and west or south and east. I mean, if they're somewhere between here and their temple, they could see the abyss. So they probably saw it peeled back. Do we know what that? I forgot to ask anyone what that looked like from uh, here. You probably would have been asking people uh, over the previous evening while drinking. Uh, it, 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 to, yes, I just don't for, remember. Yeah, for people outside uh, the tower, it very much looked like sort of just like a, a pulse of <clears throat> energy ripped off the tower. And mm -hmm. as it hit where the abyss was, it just pushed it back. And as it pushed it back, just water and mountains and stuff was revealed. Nice. Yeah. Kind of like pulling the kind of like somebody pulled well, the blanket off the world. There's decent odds. The world is probably so pissed to be awake. When someone wakes me up by pulling off blankets and not and Yeah. Was probably be the actual response from Agnesol. But um there's decent odds he's seen it, and if he hasn't, he'll see it as he comes back. Um the Town I'm walls make it harder to see, but outside of them. I'm wondering if we should be retrieving Corbin. There's not many people I can note who are better at killing things. Wasn't he going to come back here once he was done? Yes, it was only yeah, take about three days. Should we go and check and see if he can get a day pass? <laughs> <laughs> I might not follow the god of battle. But as a warrior, I'd advise against interrupting. I mean, I really. It Speaking might, it of might lost take, party members. It might take three days for uh, him to, for the airship to be ready to go. Yeah. So figure out as much of our plans as we can. I haven't known him for long, but I don't suspect he's going to be too opposed to exploring new lands. Especially and killing bad fight. people. So, yeah, that too. Uh, there's not I'll many who are to fight bad more than he does. As you, as the three of you head back out, you notice that Valor, several members of Valor Sanguinis have left the the Adventurers Guild, Aldolfo included. Um, if you ask, you can very quickly be pointed out that he he went to the Triumvirate. Um, uh, Roland went somewhere else, but didn't say. Um, seems like Adolfo was intending to talk to the airship captain. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, well, that makes that simple. Meanwhile, five. Meanwhile, yes. You're outside the wall, staring yep. out at a world that you've 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 already seen sort of the the reconstruction of it. But yeah, no, the world is a lot bigger than it was earlier. The abyss is no longer there. Um. And in, in its place, there is a much larger forest than you than previously was there, sort of along the foothills of a mountain range. Oh. All right. Uh, five just starts walking and uh, tries to remember anything about where she was last time yeah. uh, to try to find... What's his face? Give me a survival check. Eleven. Um, you pretty easy. It, it's hard to navigate because the thing you've been, you're so used to navigating by the abyss isn't there anymore, um, and so landmarks have distinctly changed. Uh, you you find your way back to what you think is a grove that the that you were in when you met Max and Dantalus. Um There are there are at the very least the same woodland creatures that were there previously. Well, not necessarily the same, but the same kind. Okay, I would like to look at them. And I have nothing that will enable me to talk to them. <laughs> I look around and see if I see a giant dragon. Any perception check. Okay. 
I hope I, I roll super I well. Give me a survival and then a perception check. Okay. <laughs> 18. Uh, you do not see a dragon. Do I see You do, a however, place... see oh. signs of a fire of some kind. Um, along the edge of the mountain range, as the as the forest gives way to foothills, there is a small group of burnt trees um, that seem like they got caught in some form of con- con- sort of tightly contained fire. Uh, the ground itself has been charred to ash as well. Um, there's no remains of anything there, other than fire. I'm trying to figure out what my I know we had a conversation about them, but I'm trying to find my uh, favorite terrains. Being a fire enthusiast, may I approach the fire and I mean, attempt the... to determine its uh, sure. origins? Give me a give me fire a, enthusiast. Give me a nature roll. <laughs> it's a really nice way to say pyro. Eleven. <laughs> Big fire. Yeah. Big good. fire, concentrated fire. So maybe a dragon's breath, maybe something else, maybe magic. Can I um, smell the bird stuff? It smells like ash. Oh. It smells I, like I, carbon. <laughs> I gently taste it. It oh, tastes fine, like ash. A fine vintage. Um, is this either mountain or arctic terrain? Um, sort of mountain foothills, so a mountain would count. Okay. Does that mean I get my natural explorer for tracking? Yes. Cool. Um, so I have advantage on that first one. Survival. Perception. Twenty six and a ten. I just saw you. You sort of head out and fly up into the air. <laughs> Heading back towards the same area you found five last time, assuming that that's where five was going to go. Um, or start, yeah. To, to, to at least start with. And you don't see five. You do, however, see from a, from your vantage point, you see what looks like a burnt out grove, sort of along the foothills of the new mountains. Um, that It looks like something big burnt down several trees in, in sort of the area there. Well, that's as good a place as any to look for five, so I'll just sort of do some circles around there. Yeah, and you, you uh, very quickly, it's not hard to see uh, five sort of bending down and investigating the scorched earth. <laughs> okay. Um, Fire enthusiast. <laughs> I don't think she caused this, and I don't really care either way, so I'll just... Land down next to her. Hey. Five. The winged one appears. <sighs> Five sighs. But she doesn't look over. And she doesn't pay any attention. And she just continues doing what she's doing. Give me another perception check, you love. Doing okay? It's me? No, five. Doing. Ten. The, the the ash is, from what you can tell, uh, this was burnt fairly recently. The ash is not compacted. It's not hard. It hasn't dried, like which is an odd statement to say. But ash that's been around for a while sort of tends to crust and hard and solidify rather than remain loose. Uh, and this is still very loose, as if it's just freshly went out like maybe half a day ago. You do hear Agdrasol addressing you, whether or not you care to respond. Yeah, I don't care. Uh, do I see anything like dragon scales or... Uh, no, no tea. dragon scales. All right, is there anything in the burned area, like plants or animals? What no, kind of a just, area does this encompass? And it sort of was, it looks like it might have at one point been like a, just a grove of trees. And now the only thing left is burnt ground, 
and tree stumps and fallen trees. Agdrasol, as you try to call out and talk to Five, you can definitely tell that Five is really obsessed with this sort of the ground and the the area mm-hmm. around. Can I do like a survival or something? Sure. Give me a survival check. Still in the mountains? Yes. They're just sort of in the footholds, so it'll qualify. I mean, this, this this looks like the site of pointed destruction by a dragon of some kind. <laughs> like, a dragon wanted something here dead. And so it killed uh, so it. You dragon hunting? I look over at this person, and then I pointedly ignore them yet again. Okay. Don't know what I did to piss you off, but, like, whatever happened in the tavern, sorry. I have no idea what she's, what this person is talking about. He, in this case, but... Ah, uh, yes. Um, I have no idea what this, as a what player, this person is talking about. As a player, uh, we were in a tavern, and you want... We were at Tavern 5, went over to touch Agrisol's wings, and Selena bamfed. Five. Oh, yeah. 5 has completely forgotten this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 5 doesn't care anymore. Sorry, that's, that's I just gone. wanted to make sure that's... that... No, it's good. Yeah. She's totally forgotten that. <laughs> Lots of things have happened between then and now. Thanks for bringing have... it up, though. <laughs> yeah, now she remembered. She's like, oh, shit, I never did get to touch those wings, did I? I uh, mean, does she remember? Because that was an out-of-character conversation. I yeah, no, <laughs> she doesn't remember. Five doesn't care. She just kind of looks over at Agersol and then just shakes her head and walks back into town. Walks back towards town? Yeah. So the two of you, as, as Five shakes her head and starts walking, the two of you both hear a rumbling sound. Five looks up with glee and like holds her arms out, like, take me, I'm here. <laughs> There's a very nervous wing down there as well. Uh, He's not aggressive, just tense. Coming down from the mountains, <laughs> you see uh, this bra, this brass, yeah. No, was, was he brass or bronze? I've forgotten the color of the fucking dragon. He was Damn it. brass. He was because brass, was yes. Blind. He was brass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah the um, <clears throat> you see a brass dragon. A large, your, by your determination, an ancient brass dragon. Uh, beautiful. M- massive in size. Just sort of coming down from the mountains and just <laughs> landing in this burnt out grove looking down at the two of you. Well, it seems you've found a friend. It's Massive Dentalist! Ah! Hello. Um, my name is Actosol. Mm. So you can speak. That one can't. Or at least not much. I gather she can write from... I'm just smiling like crazy. Like, yes! Mm, yes you did show some ability to write previously he's back what are the two of you doing out here in my hunting ground Uh, I apologize I went looking for my friend she seemed to wander off Mm. (laughs) five rights I was looking for you looks down at it why? I like you. <laughs> Not in a non-platonic way. I just like you as a concept. Agdrasol, if a dragon could roll its eyes, this one did. Yeah, I'm a little worried that we're going to be fire faced in a second, but everything seems going okay, so I'm just watching. There's sort of a glow of magical energy as this massive brass dragon form shrinks down into a bronze-skinned 
sort of uh, 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 blonde hair, blonde, blondish white hair, uh, lean humanoid figure wearing sort of slacks, but no, no real, no shirt really, just sort of a sash. And he just crosses his arms and looks at the two of you. So what about me is so interesting to you, Drow? You're pretty. <laughs> also, you have a pleasant speaking voice. And just you have like, a large presence. I, I just picture the subtitle in front of Agrisol screaming internally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know how bird wings like poof up when the bird is scared or frightened? Yes. It, Elf wings turns out do the same thing. Andersaw is instinctively trying to appear <laughs> larger out of fear. <laughs> yep. Uh, arms folded in this sort of casual manner. He looks looks at it. Well, you are certainly not the first to be overcome by the nature of my kind. Five has no idea what that means, but she's like, yeah, people that, should like you. You're beautiful. <laughs> that being said, I am not one for worshippers. Oh, yeah, no, that's not what this is. You're just nice, that's all. Worship seems like it takes a lot of time. It does, it's why I don't want any. But there's an expectation, and it, it's, it gets awkward after a few hundred years. Okay, breathe. <laughs> Andrew saw us off to one side, reminding himself to breathe. <laughs> yeah. Um. It is this this like you you are feeling that pressure of a dragon. Like it's not. Yeah. It, it it's 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 only partially mental. There is there is a pressure to his presence, even in his humanoid form. Mm -hmm. Does five feel that, or is he? Because I don't. You do an amount. It may, and it may very well be what's sort of feeding into that ooh pretty for five. Yeah. Um, there is just this air of magnificence about him. And not, not in the extravagant human, like, like, oh, I'm really rich and wealthy kind of magnificence, but this innate feeling of awe in his presence that just, he's constantly there. And Agdasol's probably more freaked out by it than someone who's not a professional hunter type would be, <laughs> if that's fair to say. Yeah, and particularly because you know how dangerous this is. Like yeah. a sneeze and a sneeze and you're dead, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so he's Okay, um Winged one. He says, without actually breaking gaze from five. Ah, uh, yes. You came looking for your friend. Indeed. Yes, I did. Did you happen to spot any red wyverns on your flight over? I apologize. I don't seem... I don't... I didn't. Hmm. Well... Since you're here, I may as well. We lost Sarah's video. Hey, God. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I yeah. didn't touch anything. Max and Dantalus <laughs> look straight at the camera and goes, We lost Sarah's video. The <laughs> story will continue momentarily. Yes. And then Agdrasol and everyone else unfreeze as Sarah's video. There we goes. go. There we go. Sorry. It's okay. I must have touched something. If you intend to wander these woods, be aware, a flock of red wyverns have recently tried to invade my territory. They have proven to be quite bothersome. If you should find them, kill them or let me know. I will reward you for your efforts either way. Your generosity is appreciated. Um, five, are we going now? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> looks, he looks over at five and looks back, and then this time looks at Yggdrasol. <clears throat> there is something odd about this one. I, I suppose you could say that about most of our humanoids. But yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just as odd as you are. And then she closes the book and she walks away. <laughs> That's what I said. Right. I, thank you for the warning. Uh, we hope to. <laughs> and sort of halfway through that, he's just going to. Just let it drop and walk off. Backing away. He watches yeah, as you go. Bye. He, and like his eyes don't leave you until you break line of sight. Yeah. Uh, then... Five. <laughs> Why are you... you? Definitely don't have room to talk here. But why are you making runs with the dragon? Five opens up the book, pages back through. He's pretty. Okay. You hear the thunderous sound of wings as the dragon takes off. <sighs> That's great. Pretty things, pretty people are nice. But he said no. Okay? To you? To you. He said he was not interested. You said he was not interested in worshippers. He didn't say anything about friends. Five is determined. Checkmate, atheists! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you trying to develop a close personal relationship with Max and Dantalus? I just like him, okay? He's so. Pretty. He's been nicer to me than almost literally everyone. I get everyone. the sense that if Selena was in a better mindset, she might actually be the one to explain this. But I'll try. Um, friendship, worship, romantic relationships, any kind of thing between two or more people, people in a broader sense right now, but people, um needs to have a level of mutual both sides are okay with it and interested and in moving forward you may aesthetically appreciate did i ever get the dragon's name no this bronze dragon His however name is maximum dentistry <laughs> maximum dentistry <laughs> uh, I'll shorten that to Max and be sure never to call him that in front of himself in case he's wrong. In case you're wrong. Understanding that you are quite capable of... Um, relationships... You may aesthetically appreciate Max, Max, but <laughs> he's not interested in you. Maybe someday he'll come to... No. Aesthetically, and she spells it really badly. Like, ass. Aesthetically. Appreciate now. Me. No, she crosses that out. He doesn't have any friends. And I'm sure he appreciates the offer. But... It's part of being respectful to other people to, if someone says no, back off. I think he's also rather, I don't think he likes people being in his territory and hunting grounds. He told you you could kill stuff for him. That is what people do with individuals like me that's... That's different. That's work. But he doesn't uh, know I could kill stuff. I could kill lots of stuff. I'm sure you can, and I'm sure he's reasonably 
powerful dragons tend to be reasonably good at assessing the capabilities of those they come across. Uh, I love that Agdrasol is trying to explain this to basically a five-year-old. No one's told him anything about it's, this person. I mean, no, it's be, great. It's great. To be I love 100% it. <laughs> fair, this is a five-year-old that speaks incredibly eloquently in her writing at times. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, this yeah. is a five-year-old who chooses to be a five-year-old sometimes. In, like, a 30-year-old's body. She was just kept in, like, a dark place for a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know how much Five is picking up in this, but it's clear that Agrisol is trying to dumb things down without being condescending in any way. Um, Good luck with that. And I want to talk down. And has the more that assumption that you down. are a 30-year-old approach. Um, I... So there's this thing called the golden rule. Did I, I don't even know if this is a thing they teach on this plane. Um, it's about understanding that other people have feelings <gasps> and that you can hurt those other people's feelings with things you do. And... Just like I imagine Selena probably doesn't like it when you come into her bedroom without asking. I was like, which one is which one is Selena? And have I ever been in their bedroom? I I don't know. Uh, the fiery one who seems to enjoy sex a lot. Five has no idea which one that is. Five's not really sure she knows what girl. sex is either. There are lots of girls. How is this being expressed in the writing? Sorry. Five's I just lost looking track. confusedly at you. There's no writing. She's just like, okay. Uh, the girl. Um, well. <laughs> so some of your companions probably aren't very happy when you come into their room and they don't know that you're going to come in. Right? Five shrugs. Okay. Store owners don't like it if you don't pay for things because that's their space and those are their things. So I need to give him money? <laughs> yeah. And if the store owner tells you, I'm not selling that. Or that's Does the not dragon the want my money? Our shop is closed. Because I have money. This is beautiful. <laughs> Actually, I've... I have a good idea. I have an excellent idea for this. Um, well, as Aaron checks the document that Agdrasol would absolutely know. Um, Bol Boldrin. <laughs> no, not Boldrin. <laughs> I, I have had this exact conversation with a five-year-old before. <laughs> Yeah, so have I. I used to work caring for children. Um, <sighs> how do one pronounce the goddess of desire's name? Ah, uh, Loretha. Okay. Would she be the accurate one for, like, friendship and teaching, teaching children about sharing and caring? Or is there a better one? <laughs> um, Loretha, actually, the, Loretha... Loretha would be fine with that, um, as would be Argon. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you know what? Argon's mine. I'll just oh, sorry, go not, to... sorry, not Loretha. Er Eradanir. Loretha is the oh. scale bearer. Wrong one. Eradanir is I the was going to say, desire. that's a really weird spelling of Loretha, but I'll trust no. that I just missed the L. Sorry. No. But, er yeah, er the L is both silent and invisible. <laughs> no. Eradanir. <laughs> Eradanir is the goddess of desire. Look, my actual ability to read words is as great as five spelling on complicated words. Um, uh, you know, er Eradanir, Eradanir would be who you would... Probably <laughs> like they would teach consent yeah. heavily because it's kind of their thing. Yeah. Argon is the more PC version. I'm though. gonna. 
if five doesn't mind, head towards the temple of Aradnir. Five's like let, five's gonna let you walk wherever you want to walk. Uh, There's no guarantee she's gonna might... continue following you. Well, he's gonna try and he's Agdrasol is trying to lead you, five. Do you follow oh, or asking, do you not? Actually, he'll just say, uh, it would be easier for me to explain if we go somewhere. Is that okay? Will there be a puppet show? Maybe. I'm sure I can make a puppet show. Oh, then no. I don't like puppets. I don't have to make a puppet show. <laughs> okay, don't make a puppet show. Are you coming? <laughs> five I know you five signed a smile. something, but I... I made a smiley face in the book. All right, come on. I'll head there. And it's pretty easy to notice if someone slinks off when you're walking with them, but... Uh, It's not going anywhere. The two of you head into the temple district, um, separate from the more administrative district where the prime three are, uh, and find your way to Temple of Aradonir. Uh, the Temple of Aradonir is Isn't it the one that we got it's the an... scrying done at? No, previously? that was that was um Idos. No, no, I mean, it was Aradonir. No, no, it wasn't it was Aradonir. Because I made a joke about they mostly yeah. get people checking on cheating husbands. No, no, that's true. Yes. Yes, it was Aradonir. Yeah, no, it's uh again it's sort of it's fairly open floor plan. Um, with this sort of Grecian-style building, uh, and all of the priests and priestesses are wearing basically togas that don't cover anything, um, except for the waist down. Like they 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 do the they do sort of a half decent job of covering the tops, um, and it's it's fairly comfortable. There's lots of lounges and and cushions and and blankets and pillows and incense burning. Um, I'll pull aside a priest or priestess that's going by and sort of actively engaged with the service and explain the basics of the situation as he understands them. He has this friend um, who seems to have like very limited social experience and social intelligence um, and is trying to explain that while like Agdrasil would probably be slightly better at this than I yeah. am, but trying to explain the basics of... And what are you wanting from the priestess? Um, essentially, that talk that they give to children, like okay. someone who can do that. He's not assuming that every one of them can, but like yeah, yeah. sort of the basics of this is how you make friends. This is what happens if someone says, I don't want to be your friend. Yeah. Um... um. Okay. Five, give me an intelligence saving throw. <laughs> this is going to be good. A 14. Oh, not, that's better not, than I thought it was going to be. Not, not bad, no. So, Thank you. Uh, this, this priestess comes over and, and initiates a conversation with you, first asking if you mind if she talks to you. And it's an elven priest. It's a, it's sort of a, it's a high elven priestess. Um, you know, tall, very angular cheeks, very beautiful looking. Um, and basically goes through the explanation of what consent is, uh, and using, they, they, they typically use your own body as the example. Like if you, if you don't want somebody to grab you by the shoulder, then you say no. Well, if somebody doesn't, if some, if you want to be friends with somebody or to interact with somebody and they say no, it's the same concept. Um, and, and going further into detail is like, that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean you can have no contact with someone, but that if you're looking for a very specific thing that they are very specifically not wanting, then that's not nice or warranted to continue trying to go after that thing that you want. Um, so a very, a very basic, you know instructional video kind of thing 
uh, of the idea and concept of consent between primarily that with, with Iradnir, it's going to be primarily consent between adults. Um, well, Agnesol with, is assuming five is an adult. I just, yeah. he just explained that she doesn't seem to have a lot of social experience. Yeah. 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 Um, that being sort of the emphasis there is that, you know, if somebody says they don't want to talk to you, then all trying to talk to them is going to do is make them mad and then it's going to make things worse and then fights might break out and then, uh, and so they go down the line. Uh, with a 14, you, 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 you're, you're fairly decently understanding the concept of consent. Um, and then you internalize it is your own decision. Yeah. How you internalize the concept of consent is up to, is up to you. But you have been informed of and retained the information of the concept of consent. So no puppet show? No, we don't typically do puppet shows. Oh, good. No, it's it. Many of the things that we talk to all of us about puppets would be very inappropriate. <laughs> Doing. I mean, it depends on how you make the puppets. <laughs> Damn it, Jeremy! I said too easy. Five looks Avenue like she's Q. gonna write something and then, like, America puts the pen Fuck away. Yeah. <laughs> Here and I... then closes the book. <laughs> Uh, overall, for, for overall, it, fairly pleasant conversation, though. This is a very nice lady. That was a very gentle way of speaking. High charisma, around near priests. Huh. Never would have guessed that would be their <laughs> secondary stat. <laughs> secondary. <laughs> um. So sort of following that. Mm -hmm. They're like divine sorcerers. I just saw I was going to... So... Based on that, do you sort of understand what I was talking about with Max? That if he says he did, really doesn't want us in his hunting ground, he seemed to imply that he's not a, he does not currently appreciate your advances, that the importance of backing off. Five just leaves. She's done with people talking at her for now. Agrisol will probably just collapse on one of the couches that I know they have. Oh, they have many, many couches. Oh. <laughs> she comes over. To uh, Are you okay? So sort of rests the hand on your shoulder. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to make friends with this girl and I, everything I do, I feel like she hates me. And I know that if she does, that should be fine with me. I should just let that happen. But Well, it seems your friend has difficulty with a variety of things, but it may also be simply that, well, for many people... Learning is a personal experience. Mm -hmm. And being forced down the path of learning can be as frustrating as failing to go down it at all. Yeah. So perhaps, as we discussed previously with consent, pull it back a little. Maybe that will help. Yeah. I just didn't want her to get blown up by it or breathed on by a dragon. Oh, that would be bad, yes. But, in many cases, it is better to be there for a friend than to be everything for a friend. Yeah. I just... This may seem silly, but uh, our party, our group, is apparently heading off on a trip now that the world has opened up more, and... I don't, I'm new, I guess, 
would be the best way to put it. And it seems like she doesn't want anything to do with us. She'd much prefer to be on her own, which I can respect. And if that's what she wants, of course, that should be um, within reason. I get the sense she's she probably would struggle completely on her own. I want to respect that, but I also don't. Maybe it's silly to say, but I feel like she doesn't want to be here and I'm dragging her along, which I don't want to do that to her. Well, perhaps the best way would be to let her go and see if she comes back. Yeah. If she comes back, then she wants to be with the group. If not, then that is a choice being made. Thank you. You're welcome. Would you like some tea? I'm fine. It's like, <clears throat> not, it's 12 a.m. at this point. I can go for alcohol instead. Thank you. <laughs> He'll head out. It's uh, noon. I can get some beer. <laughs> it'll be a fault. Yeah. Uh, I had a particularly bad hangover, so I waited until noon. What do you want <laughs> from me? No, it's good. It's good. Meanwhile, cutting back to Baldrin and Selena. I think we need to go find an Adolfo. Right. Uh, we need to go talk to the Triumvirate. Or go go make in that them. direction, not talk with them. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah you, got, you, you guys make your way to the Triumvirate. Um, again, the sort of large three-tiered building sort of smushed together. Um, and inside you find desks and bureaucracy and paperwork. The fine line is quite long today for some reason. Um, <laughs> the fine <you> line. <laughs> the fine line. It's on the left-hand side. Um... And yeah, no, it Ad Adolfo is not subtle, right? Uh, so it's very easy to find him in his large feathered cap. Is he uh, in the fine line? He is not in the fine line. He is sort of in the middle line, the 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 platinum <laughs> section, the sort of the platinum reception desk, speaking to the receptionist <laughs> there. Do you approach, or do you wait for yep. him to finish talking? Right. Yep. Yeah, but fine. And sort of as you're coming up, you hear, hey, so you tell me they are being situated. Uh, oh, ah, my friends, welcome. What up, Buttercup? Uh, well, I'm simply acquiring the location for uh, the airship that uh, came to town. Uh, your friend, the winged one, said they were from uh, out of town. Uh, right. So I wish to go speak with them. Great minds think alike. Yes. Well, we're just checking to see whether we want, we... Um, I, I'm still not entirely clear. Look at Baldwin. I think we're all in. Uh, there's a couple of us that need to answer that one, but most of us, yes. Um, so yeah, we're all in. Um, <laughs> Baldwin just kind of. Well, hey, would you like to come with me to we speak were, with you? Yeah. Yes. That was we were going to we were going to come to you and see what your leads are, where 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 your thoughts are, where to go, etc. And it appears that you had the same idea that that Adrasal had. Yes, well, uh, the uh, the one the the the, the airship, uh, as I recall, is a feature of my homeland. Uh, though, of course, my recollections may be very different from the reality. Uh, right, but. Of it, the uh, one would hope that if this is an airship from my homeland, or if it is an airship from somewhere else, they might at the very least know if my homeland is in existence now, uh, and if so, how to get there. I do not remember coming here. I will tell you the story sometime, but uh, my memories uh, big uh, end with a ship crashing and begin with me waking up on the lake outside. So, uh, I I can sympathize. Yes, well, um, the. Does board, do, do I see a, a no smoking sign anywhere? 
Yes, several. Okay. Darn it. He was like, I could really use a cigar right now. And then he sees the sign like, damn it. In fact, you see several uh, familiar dwarves in the fine line currently. <laughs> Who have been smoking, obviously. Yep. Uh, she's like, puts a hand to his forehead. I mean, I feel like if that sign's there, so I was like, oh, shit. Uh, All right. Well, yeah, let's go. Let, uh, yes, let's they, go talk to an airship captain. Well, they appear to have uh, tied, tethered the uh, ship uh, to the tower of the Rangers headquarters. So he's actually just next door. Oh, that uh, makes it easy. Go up to there. Yes. I follow Adolfo. And he flips his cape uh, back around to his shoulder and strides out, uh, majestic as always. Um, so, uh, Boldrin, notably out, on the way out the door, pulls a cigar out, but waits until they're out of the building to actually light it and <laughs> take a try. <laughs> I hate human cities. Uh, to be fair, this is a very unique one. Yeah, it is to him. <laughs> well, well I, was, I, I apologize for my race. Let's just go. Although I feel that the both of you will it will greatly enjoy Luxuria, my homeland, my hometown. Uh, I'm excited already. Uh, Luxuria is a beautiful place, a port city unlike any port city you have ever. Well, you've never seen a port city unless, except for the thing. But regardless, uh, it is a port city to rival any in the world. It. Uh, Massive uh, ships of pleasure in the harbor, uh, houses built above the water, overlooking the great maw of, Colti of Valkyr. Uh, it is a beautiful sight. You will love it, trust me. Sounds like entirely too extravagant. Sorry, I'm a dwarf. Uh, there are many dwarves in the city that enjoy it for the trade. Sounds well. fucking awesome. I'm sure you will love it. Well, let us go. Um, and yeah, the, he he sort of leads the way over to the the uh, the Rangers headquarters. Um, after some very quick talking on his part, uh, you find yourselves climbing a tower. You're not quite certain what he said. It was very fast, and in his accent, sometimes it's hard to pick up, but. Apparently, uh, he, he left the guard giggling um, and blushing and opened the door and walked up. What what physical sex is the guard? I obviously can't tell gender without interacting, but... Uh, male. Okay. Uh, and he opens the door. You all head upstairs. Uh... And eventually find yourself standing on a very makeshift airship dock, at sort of at the top, uh, on the roof of the uh, on the roof of the building where this airship is sort of cradled precariously in very rapidly constructed. It's kind of like if somebody took the you know a shipyard's uh, 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 like like a shipyard's um, building dock where they actually construct the ship. Mm -hmm. Somebody very hastily made a makeshift one of those and put it on top of the building. <laughs> is is what the uh, is what the ship is on. I don't know if it looks probably, up. Uh, probably get some. I feel like not... I, I feel like they're going to need to make a few new buildings in core before another one of these comes through. Yeah, this, uh, I don't think this is going to hold up to more than. I don't think it's going to hold up to this one for much longer. Actually, uh, I think it's still floating. <laughs> he sort of looks. Yeah, you know, if you look at it, it's it's it. There's a there's an amount of you can tell there's an amount of weight on the scaffolding, but the engines are still going. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes. Uh, I believe they will probably have to contract underhold to build a new thing. Probably should do one soon. Mm. Well, regardless, and Adolfo leads the approach up to the ship. Uh, the ship captain comes down and talks, and the two of you, uh, Captain Firelight again, um, Adolfo talks for a while with the ship captain before waving the two of you over. 
Hey, so apparently the ship is out of a, is out, actually out of Eleonora, not Luxuria, no, but the capital, uh, Elan, um, which uh, is on the way. Uh, should we require her, or should you like to accompany me? Uh, they will be able to drop us off in Luxuria, which is where my search begins. That works for me. I am excited. My dwarven friend. Uh, well, someone's got to make sure the two of you stay alive, safe, sane, all the above. Oh, trust me. I have many ways of keeping myself both alive and sane. Safe, not so much, but, uh, you know, it's the lifestyle. Well, I, and, and so you get you get the, the they're not leaving for another couple of days. Um, they have to recharge the, especially because they're not able to fully land. Uh, they have to re, they have to recharge the uh, levitation crystals that keep the ship up aloft. Um, so um, that'll take a couple of days of magical tuning. I'm I'm able to actually make things very easily with both my forge blessing and the fabricate spell. Mm hmm. Um, would I, could I be able to conceive a way to actually construct a little bit more actual support for give, this ship? Give me a intelligent, just an intelligence roll with proficiency. Okay, uh, well, that will be a history check for me. 17. You are not a macro engineer. Mm-hmm. You you specialize in smaller weapons and armor, construction yeah. weapons and armor. Uh, you can definitely think of ways to reinforce them, but it's not your field of expertise. Uh, there are several. Uh, there are you know there is a dock. There is a a, a, a dock builder in Underhold who has built, who built the docks for Core, um, and r regularly updates them. He'd probably be the one to to get on this. Um, or other building constructors. You're like you're, you're. It's out of your realm of expertise. Do I know him well enough that I could target him with a sending spell? Yeah. So I I I will cast uh, sending, and um, just leave the message for him. This is Baldwin from the Church of Forge. There's a new airship in core that will very swiftly need a dock. I feel there's some coin in it for you. The response you get is, oh, I, we've already heard it. We're on our way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, at least someone will be here very soon. Oh, a couple days. Try and keep that ship alive. <laughs> or at least make a dock for the next one. Right. Well, if you don't mind, we're having to harness whatever magical power we can to keep it afloat. Um, I believe somebody mentioned some sort of magisters. I think we're going to give us it later, but... Mm. Uh, well, cool. We thank you for your patronage, and we'll uh, discuss fees later. Um, oh. Sounds good. Adolfo will do a flourish with his hat and start heading back down. Yep. Pleasure doing business. Of course. <coughs> Is there anything else the two of you are doing right now? Um, I mean, just heading back to the back to the the Adventurers Guild. Okay, Corbin. As you hit the floor yep. for the seventy fifth time this day, uh, your body racked with pain. Just mostly muscle soreness and exhaustion, because the battle priests did not exaggerate in the slightest when they said this would probably kill some people. Um, you do, however, feel this strange new connection in you. As you're doing your training, You, f whenever you execute a maneuver correctly, or whenever you strike a target true, you feel this sense of fire in your chest this raw acknowledgement of power um, whenever you land a blow it 
you're not certain when you started to feel it, but it is definitely there now. Okay. And after one particularly, you know, well-guided strike, uh, one of the battle priests looks over at you. Aha! I see Coltir has found one he likes. Good for you. Your training will complete today. Tomorrow you can be on your way. All right. Oh. Uh, bring it. Your to, like crack. Yeah, your training has been completed. Your retraining, I should say, has been completed. You are now officially right. down one level of barbarian, up one level of paladin. Okay. Uh, and after one after one more long rest, you'll be ready to come back to core. All right. Um, while we're on our way back to the tavern. Actually, I say this in it. I'm. I'll meet the lot of you back at the tavern. I need to go inspect something really quick. Um, I'm going to head back to where our uh, giant friend's uh, open challenge was happening. Okay. Is he still there? Yes, he is still there. I want to take a closer look and examine him more thoroughly. Potentially even magically, because Baldrin is still kind of asking that question of what are you? Okay, how do you want to do this? Do you want to get in the ring with him? Um, honestly, I think that's the only way he's going to be able to really find out, yeah. Alright, you step into the ring with Aziel. Well, welcome back. Are you challenging me alone? I think I am. I don't suspect this will be a tough fight for you, but I've got some personal questions. Very well. Come then. I'll let you land the first blow. As you wish. Um, he, uh, Baldrin, will focus for a moment, and this uh, uh, this fight is only half of what he's doing right now. He's also, he's kind of watching this person for their reactions and trying to glean what they are. So he's going to start with heat metal and cast it on their sword. Okay. Give me a spell casting rule. Uh, that's going to be that's spell casting your... ability check. Or yeah, just ability check. It? Ability check. So it'll be your wisdom. Just a wisdom roll. Twenty one. You see the metal of the sword heat up. He doesn't seem to flinch. Looks down at it. I take that as your opening gambit. Flips the blade up and moves forward very quickly. Give me a perception check. Since you're specifically trying to keep an eye on him. 19. He definitely moves with an amount of grace unnatural to a mortal being. Uh, as he sort of slides forward, swinging this massive sword uh, at a level that, you know, at, 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 a, at, a, at a level of competency that he probably shouldn't be able to, given his the size of the blade and him. Mm -hmm. um, a 21 hits you. Uh, I cast shield with my reaction, and it doesn't. Ah, a 33 hits you. Yes, it does. <laughs> Uh, you take 10 points of slashing damage, 1 point of radiant damage, and 20 points of radiant damage. <laughs> That's, uh, 31. Give me a religion check. Twenty-three. Uh, you're not- this is definitely a divine blade that hit you. Um, something that a paladin could probably wield, but as it stands, this, this entity, the blade and the ability sort of put together as you're physically experiencing it, there's only one thing in your mind that could move this well and swing a blade like this, as a planetar of some kind. So, with that in mind, on my next turn, just to keep him busy... I will um, just cast a regular second level uh, spiritual weapon. Okay. Uh, which will attack him for a 21. All right. Uh, a 21 will hit. 
which will just deal seven points of force damage. Okay. And then with my action, I will cast Locate Creature, naming a Planetar. All right. How long does Locate Creature take to cast? One action. One action? You locate a Planetar. Yeah, okay. He's swinging a sword at you. Yeah. So that's what you are, he says, as the blade is coming in towards him. Does the 26 hit you? Uh, yes, even if I did cast shields. So and a 34 it. also hits you. Yeah. You take 14 points of slashing, 15 points of slashing, 5 points of radiant, 7 points of radiant, and 45 points of radiant damage. Uh, grand total, that knocks me well out. So, poof, you go, oh, so that's what, bam! You are expecting that. You wake up moments later as Divine Radiance brings you back to full. He picks you up and sets you on your feet. Well fought, Cleric, but I feel like perhaps challenging me alone isn't the best strategy. To be, to be honest, I wasn't expecting to win, but I got the answer I was looking for. He, smile, he gives you sort of a knowing smile. And thus you know my purpose for being here is true. When I find a group of adventurers that can defeat me, they will win a reward and be put to a task. How many do you, how many do you allow to face you at once? However many want to. I have faced as many as ten at once. And as little as one. I think I know a group of five or six that might actually be able to threaten you. We shall see. He steps back to the center, plants the sword again, and awaits the next challenger. I head back. I, I'm assuming he healed me to full. Yeah, he did. He healed, he healed you to full. Yeah. So I head back to the tavern. So, Adrasol, after the Church of Radnir, where were you planning on going? You're muted. Two things. I'm sorry I keep taking up so much time. Right. One thing... Real quick, I wanted to stop by the Misfits Respite and see if I can get time off work to go explore the new world because I actually didn't check that in advance before planning my vacation. Okay. <laughs> Which is never a good idea. We'll get to that in just a second. What was the other thing? The second thing is I'm going to take Nero out for drinks. Okay, so we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, five, where were you going? Uh, I don't think I know where I was going. You're just wandering the city? Sure. All right. You wander the city. Let me know if there's a specific, if there's a particular place you end up looking for or you end up wanting to go, okay? Okay. All right. I just saw you go to the Misfits Respite. Yeah. Uh, behind the counter uh, is the boss, or the, the bartender at the very least, who you know to be pretty much pretty high up. Um, the, the usual crowd is here, sans the, the, the two adventuring groups, um, both, uh, da, 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 da. um, both, both the best policy and KBND are not here currently. Uh, KBND, as a reminder, is the group of four kobolds, Crack, Brack, Knack, and Drack, um, who frequent the ones who name themselves like a ruby team. Got it. Yeah. Um, but the others are there, uh, including Toriel and his daughter. Do I know what the standard policy is for asking to go on leave to adventure with some fuckers? Not really a standard policy for that. Seriously? Yeah. No. Huh. We're a weird thieves guild. No, you're thieves guild. <laughs> Not with an adventuring, two adventuring team. They so you, you do know that the two that uh, K and uh, KBND does not do any work for the deck collectors. Mm -hmm. They are just they just frequent the Misfits respite. Uh, the best policy do do work for the deck collectors, but they are not part of the deck collectors. Sharoon has something. There's something about Sharoon in particular that gives him a lot more freedom than other members of the deck collectors have. No one the really tiefling? knows what... It, yeah, the tiefling. No one really knows what that is. Sure, no one knows what that is. That's that's what we all say. <laughs> there might be some assumptions, but no one actually knows. 
Mostly because no one has ever, very few people have actually met Cal. No, I know I work for someone who makes deals, and my entire job description is I'm an interplanar police force. It's true. <laughs> you just never met him. You do, um, however, know you do, however, because of what you are, you do, however, know that every time someone goes through that door, a, a planner portal opens. Yeah. <laughs> You've just never really wanted to venture through it and find out for certain. Um, I can respect my employer's privacy. There's yeah. a reason I don't have a job that's more, like, yeah. reputable. Yeah, but you, you, you do know every time you lead someone to that door, they are going to a different plane. You don't know yeah. what plane, but a different plane. I don't know. So? All right. Um... Yeah. But yeah, talking to Toriel would be your best guess. Mm -hmm. So, I've been keeping an eye on those guys you asked about. Yes, welcome back, Agdrasol. Care for a drink? Sure. Pours the drink out, puts it in the bar. Had a very successful little excursion to the um, tower. So I've heard. Seems like they're interested in going out to explore the rest of the world, some sort of vengeance quest or something. Fairly common amongst adventurers. Mm. And amongst non-adventurers. Yeah. Revenge is big business. It's also our business. Uh, on occasion. It is. <clears throat> Don't think someone's made this one our business yet. At least not. Well. That they wanted me to know. Well, that sounds like a job opportunity to me. It does. No, you wanted me to keep an eye on them, and I certainly don't mind, but... Seems that sticking around with them, if I do, would keep, take me out of the city. Well... I'll have to ask the boss, but... Course. As an immediate executive decision, it would serve <coughs> our interests quite well if you and Kalen were to continue to tag along. See if you can't make friends in some foreign lands. Friends who might want to establish more thorough connections, shall we say. Understood. It's always good to open a branch office. <laughs> Fair. See if we can't bring some misfits respite to lands abroad. All right. With your permission, and then I'll stop back by. Assume it's a yes unless told otherwise. Of course. And he'll raise a glass to you. Raise it. It's already probably half empty at this point. He doesn't drink. He just puts it back down. <laughs> I will down the rest of mine and give a nod. Mm -hmm. Get on out. Right. And second one was now, what again? It, taking you out for a drink. But yeah. important clarification. I'm assuming that as a as the resident team alcoholic, I know bars other than the Adventurer's Guild and the one with the Shady Demon Portal. Yes, there are many, many bars throughout Core. Excellent. Of Go to the Magister's types. Tower. Are you, getting, are you taking anyone along with you, or are you going by yourself? Ah. Uh, actually, sure, why not? He'll stop by the Adventurer's Guild um, in between. Okay. So, Baldrin, Selena, and Agdrasol, the three of you sort of converge on the Adventurer's Guild at roughly the same time. Cool. Hey. hey, what's up? We mm. got plant. We. It sounds like we're going on an airship. Sounds good. I thought I, that might make you happy. 
I found out a bit more information about um, Big Man in Center of Town and his open challenge. Oh. Uh, he's, uh, well, I can say his word is good on having some kind of grand reward and or higher purpose for his being there, because he's certainly nothing that belongs on this plane. Yeah, duh. How much do you know about angels? Like a fair bit. Do I what have to role make would that be? Either religion, nature probably. or either nature or religion. God damn it! Didn't take that many intelligence proficiencies. Uh, I am equally yeah. twelve. Adrasol, you know angels exist. You know they are planar creatures from divine planes. Uh, they're sort of the equivalent of demons and they're the, they're the equivalent of demons and devils. They but on the other side, um, they are very they they vary in power and authority, and they typically answer to a deity or two. Extra planar beings connected to the divine planes and the deities. Um, Selena, you know a little bit more. Um, they are they. As opposed to demons and devils who have an amount of freedom to themselves, to, to their actions in relation to whatever celestial entity spawned to them, angels tend to be more of a subservient role. They, uh, they guard and serve their deity, whereas demons will serve, but typically don't guard. Mm -hmm. Um then they'll serve under duress where angels willingly and honorably and nobly serve. Um, and again, they have a increasing level of power typically associated with number of wings, but that's not always the case. Um, planetars tend to have like six wings and it's like, it's sort of a, the really quick, the really quick math is count the wings. The more wings, the more fucked you are. Right. Uh, that's roughly what the two of you know. One, two, oh wait, they're bird wings. <laughs> Alright, so, who's... Go on. Sorry, go ahead. Please, expound. So, our friend in center of town is a particularly potent type of angel known as a planetar. Of who? Not certain yet. If I had to take a guess, it'd probably be Mardok. <laughs> yeah. But I... my point, the, the point being, angels don't just show up and start issuing challenges for no reason. No, they don't. There is an old God. He's got a purpose. He speaks of some kind of reward and also a task. And I really don't think that it's coincidence that he's shown up very recently. Could be. No. He also doesn't care how many people show up to fight him at once. And no. We've killed a demigod. I think we can handle him. Eventually. Care Eventually. about how powerful we are. That's not why I'm saying no. I mean... Certainly not. Now. Does anyone want to go drinking with a sheltered mage of shadows and darkness? Uh, what the fuck? This will be entertaining, if nothing else. I was going to invite the girl along because she seemed interested, but I think she's mad at me, so. The girl. Five. Oh, she's that mad one, at everybody. Just. At some point, someone's going to have to, like, explain to me how you guys know each other. So, so let me explain to you how this works with five. Um, you can be, you can be, you can be, be nice and accommodating and etc. And then you'll do one thing that's going to piss her off. And she will, and she will know that, that, that she doesn't like you forever. She might not even remember why. But she will know that she doesn't like you forever for that one thing. 
Billy, is that what you think of me? <laughs> that is what <laughs> Selena thinks of Five, yes. Because that has been her very self-centered experience with Five. Five doesn't even remember which one Selena is. It's <laughs> okay. It's okay. No, but that's, I... But that's, Selena that's, that's, that's Selena's explanation, yeah. though. So. Yeah. Okay. That's so, I... don't worry about... Don't worry about trying to get on Five's good side. It's probably not going to happen. And if it does, it won't be because of anything you've done. It will be because in that particular moment, she has decided that you're okay. And that'll last for a certain period of time until she decides you're not okay again. Understood. Voltron, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, Am I wrong? Not completely, but you're not entirely right either. Um, from what I understand, five comes from a place that is not pleasant, and that's left quite a mark on her. Um, she might look like a full-grown adult, but five might be the only thing she can say, but I'm also not convinced that's not the age that she believe she is or her or her mental process is stuck at okay just as a warning much like a, the only way the only way that i can explain it is she's a child whether or not she looks like it she's a child she will behave oh. as a child might that makes weirdly too much sense She's a child, but she's not. It's, it's, I'm. She has academic knowledge beyond what a child is, but her mental process is very much that of a child. Okay, well. That's a much better way of explaining it than I would, because I was just going to say, I would try to explain it, but you would get a headache. <laughs> she, just as a warning, I'm thoroughly content to let her do what she wishes for now. She wants to make friends with a dragon that does not want to make friends back. All right, so Five's going to die. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, it's the role is what happens. I just... Do we know what kind of dragon? Yeah, a uh, bronze... An ancient brass dragon. Ancient brass dragon um, named... She uh, called him Max in dentistry. I'm assuming that his name does involve Max in some way, though I'm not going to say it if I meet him again. <sighs> I well, that's simultaneously dragon is a bad idea. That's simultaneously much better and much worse. <laughs> By the way, he apparently is looking for some wyverns that have set up outside of town in his territory. So if we come across them and either kill them or inform him of their location, grand reward will be ours. I... Still, dragons. Uh... I mean, metal dragon as opposed to underground dragon or chromatic dragon. But have I encountered underground dragons before? No, you haven't. Oh, underground drag. Great. Of course, there's more of them. Yeah, metallic. Seemingly a nicer, less angry at humanoids one, but one who explicitly does not want worshippers or followers. I. I did bring five by uh, the temple earlier to see if um, the followers of the Goddess of Desire could help at all with explaining that part. Well, there's a reason we send our children to school every day throughout the year. It takes time. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It doesn't always stick. Well, if she wants to keep traveling with us, I'm fine with that. Yeah, sure. But 
uh, it's hard to not know if someone's going to be there. It's hard to rely on them. I mean, from so... a personal friendship standpoint, but more from a practical warrior standpoint. I feel like this wonderfully dovetails into the conversation that we had previously. Yeah. We're responsible. Everybody's responsible for their own actions. If five wants to travel with us, and I understand for the, the mentality, there's 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 some some mitigation there. But ultimately, five wants to travel with us. Great. If five wants to go their own way, great. Fair. I'm cool either way. As long as she doesn't, like, you know, try to set the boat on fire. Or drop out in the middle of a fight. Eh, yeah. Well. That I can Let's go. With. I just don't want. Let's go I just don't want to be. I don't want to be a thousand feet in the air when my, my w when the ship starts to crash. I can catch you. Can you catch all of us? Not without magic. You'd catch me first, right? Yeah. You're lying, aren't you? No. I'm, I'm pretty sure Kaylin has feather fall. <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, there's a possibility. <laughs> I was going to say, his charisma is zero. Give me a second. Oh! He's being honest. Okay. As Whether or not you believe it or not. I can tell with my persuasion well, of five. All right, there you go. So, the group of you, all three of you, <laughs> go to the Elemental Magisters? Yeah, knock on yep. the door. Okay. Uh, you get a voice in your head. Who goes? Actressol. And for whom are you here? Shadowborn Nero. I promised him a drink. <laughs> Dor doesn't ask, why are you trying to take a miner to drink? Dor doesn't care. <laughs> Door opens. <laughs> darkness in front. Darkness ahead. For the record, by the way, you don't have to catch me. I have gaseous cloud. I can float down. Thanks. But Just I'm... for future reference. Yeah. The three of you go in. That takes a minute to cast, doesn't it? I mean, I, depending on how high up we are, I'll still be good. <laughs> no, no, it only takes an action. It takes a minute oh. to reform. <clears throat> oh, also, yeah. sorcery points. It takes a bonus action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we head in. You head in. So you step through the veil of darkness and find yourself standing uh on the other side of the door in this room that Baldrin has seen, but the two of you have not. Um it is sort of a tower of kinds with a large purple crystal in the middle of it. Um sort of just free floating in the middle of the room bookshelves sort of lining the walls and above you you can see the uh a, a, a slightly smaller concentric ring uh above you and then a third one even higher above that indicating sort of like levels of this tower and in the middle of each ring sort of going down are slightly smaller large purple crystals uh just sort of in the middle uh forming the center point of the tower if i recall correctly the center crystal is how we went up last time correct there was a there was like sort of a plinth that came out, but yes. Nero. Uh, uh yes. Hey, it's Agdrasalt from the whole fighting the dark shadow entropy monster thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. uh, give, 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 give me a minute. Okay. Um. Just lean back and wait. After a few seconds, um. A bit of purple electricity sort of rockets down the crystal, and standing before you is Shadowborn Nero, um, in his black robes with the hood pulled back and silvery hair uh, askew, his slightly scarred face, um, looking at the group of you kind of with this look of anxiety on his face. 
How are you doing with the whole shadow monster gone thing? Uh, well, I'm that that's 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 um a moment later, uh, two more streaks of electricity <laughs> hit the ground, um, and you see uh two uh taller figures sort of appear. Uh, one of them stands about six foot three, uh, not quite a foot taller than Nero, but almost there, uh, with long white, with actually, sorry, with short cut white hair, um, and two almost crystalline white horns sticking out of her forehead and curling back with this elfin look to her, um, and two sort of glowing blue eyes wearing fairly dark, wearing just sort of like dark leathers um, that are sort of uh, uh, form fitting uh, and a barbed tail, a, a equally crystalline looking barbed tail sort of whipping out from behind her. Uh, the second one is a human red hair that's sort of wild and fiery looking uh, with a tattoo uh, on sort of the side of her cheek going down into her shirt and down one arm. Uh, wearing sort of uh, very generic traveling gear, like tunic and pants. Uh, refresh my memory. Uh, was Were either of these people that we met when nope. Border... Okay. Uh, Nero sort of jumps slightly as they appear. Uh, yes, introductions. Uh, 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 Agdrasol and Selena and Baldrin... Uh, this is uh, uh, Mari, uh, the Mystic Theurge, uh, and Flame Seeker Kyla. Uh, Kyla, Mari, this is the people that um, Gorn and Belthar and I helped out the other day. Um, A pleasure. The two of them look at the group of you. What up, motherfuckers? Oh, so you're the ones that helped out Nero. Thank you very much for all your assistance. It's been... Oh, that whole... Ch ch shards of Idos Umber thing has been quite a pain in the ass for a while. So thank you very much for your assistance. Yeah. Zendrick has been... Glad we could... Flipping out about it. Handle that for him. Uh, yes. Well... It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, Nero, what, what, why are they here? Nero looks up at them. Um, well, they, uh, um, <clears throat> what you see, um, <clears throat> sort of like it's a thing in his throat. Like, what Nero's trying to say is his friends want to know if he can come out and play for a bit. Ah, uh, so certainly, no. And they, they sort of like put, put it, like almost in unison, put hands on his shoulders and shove him forward. And he just <laughs> very awkwardly, uh, yeah, um, that, well, thank, 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 thank you. And he just hey. sort of stands there in front of the three of you with his hands we clasped in front of him. We get him in a bare minimum of trouble. Kyla shrugs. So long as you don't burn down half the town, we're fine with that. Well, I mean, I'd be fine with burning down half the town, so would Belthar, but Mari and the others probably not. So, I mean... Yes. I don't feel like dealing with the fine work of burning down the town right now. I appreciate the thought, though. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking our little guy out. Have fun. Yeah. You get the sense that they're highly amused by the fact that Nero feels awkward about this. <laughs> Hey, celebrate your freedom from demonic forces chasing your every move. Right. Uh, is there is is there a specific place you wanted to go? There's Come a few bars, places I was thinking of. Right. Uh, um, but if there's anywhere that you wanted to go, then uh, he, he sort of leads the, the three of you out. Yeah. No, no, I didn't. I didn't have any ideas, and the three of you are out. Out into the world, and you take him, assumedly, on a whirlwind tour of the bars of Kor. Yep. You find out about three bars in, he can't hold his liquor. <laughs> Amazing. I know. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so in for this. <laughs> he is. There's that's a you reason have a I stopped for Baldrin and Selena. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's what you have a cleric for. 
He is. Uh, <gasps> make me general charisma rolls for carousing checks. Okay. Uh, see how well you carouse. How well do I carouse? Uh, <laughs> I carouse with a ten. That's... Five. I'm mostly just drinking with him. I have Xanthar's guide, so I know the carousing when rules. When he won. <laughs> Uh, Selena, you corrals more than enough for the other two. Yes. <laughs> um, this is sort of my thing. You, you, you sort of take him on this, and, and again, three bars into it, he is mostly not there anymore. <laughs> um, just jabbering on whenever anybody asks him any question, he goes into a lengthy, like, university thesis level dissertation about some arcane principle that you can't understand because you can't put the words in the correct order because he's never been drunk before. <laughs> and he doesn't quite know how to rework his brain when he is inebriated. <laughs> he's well, a talky he drunk. Let's him talk and is just endlessly amused. Uh, he, Bold, Boldrin, Boldrin is basically on standby with lesser restoration <laughs> in case anybody needs it for not vomiting. So while the three of you are doing that, Corbin. Yes. You find your training has come to an end. Um, and there is sort of a, there's a ritualistic ceremony uh, that sort of crowns the group of recruits as battle priests of Colt here. Um, there's only four of you. There were there there were thirty of you that went there. Not all of them died, but only yes, four I of you made some it. Some of them left. Only four of you made it through. Yeah. Um. Uh, you you and three other half orcs. Okay. Um. So. You uh, you go through this ritual, which basically uh, basically the ritual indicates um, you are f you are the spear of Coltier. You are his might and his wrath and his fury. Wherever you go, you carry his honor, and you earn his glory. Should you fail, then he will leave you. Do not retreat. And do not fear, for the battle is yours. <laughs> and you are given uh, a suit of armor that is very similar to the suit of armor that these others have. Uh, it is made of what you can, what you now know to be wyvern scales. Um, cool. One of your trials was, uh, as a group, the four of you that lived, hunted down and killed a red wyvern um, on the plains. And this event, and its scales were repurposed into armor for you. Okay. Um, this armor is... What's your current class of armor that you wear? Uh, adamantine half plate. Yeah. Um, this armor is not is a, a fire-resistant scale mail. Okay. Um, it, it gives you resistance to fire damage when it's being worn. It doesn't require attunement. Um, and it's treated as a plus one scale mill. Okay. It's ceremonial armor. You don't have to wear it, but you have it. Okay. It is branded with the insignia of Colt here as well. Okay, so fire resistance and what was what else was it? It's plus one scale mill with fire resistance. Okay. So you have resistance to fire when wearing it. Okay. Um, and you are also given a spear. Uh, which is which was made from the teeth and claws of the wyvern. It is a plus one spear. Okay, cool. And yeah, and then in the morning you head back to core. So All right. the bartending crowd and Corbin will probably meet up at roughly the same time in the morning because you all will probably have been sleeping in. <laughs> Five. Yes. 
While you were wandering around, was there anything that you wanted to do, or do you eventually just head back to the Adventurer's Guild and call it a night? I want to go watch guys get tattoos, and then I'll go back to the Adventurer's <laughs> Guild. You watch guys get Very tattoos. Very specific. They do that. They 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 do tattoos. They, they there's actually like out on the docks. There's a very a variety of tattoo places, and they tend to do it right out there. So you can get the salt in it and get it like really painful, so that people you know, it, it's sort of a fun thing that the tattoo artists do. Um, fun. It's five fun, appreciates it's fun for this. them. Yes, five appreciates a good art form. Most people that and... are getting their tattoos out there are drunk, anyways. Uh, People that get other tattoos that don't want salt typically aren't drunk and do it in the city, not on the docks. Um, but if you want to watch people get tattoos, the docks where you go. Yeah. <sighs> Five watches people get tattoos for like two hours and then she goes back and goes to sleep. All right. The morning comes. Corbin, you step into the Adventurer's Guild fresh off the road. Armor either on or, or not and spear in hand. Feeling the fury of court, uh, of of Coltier flowing in you, and right. witnessing the various drunks of the adventurers guild plastered on the floor. Do any stand out? No. I mean, is <laughs> is there a group? Are they still down in the? In the or no, they went to in a separate bar. Yeah, they went. They went various <laughs> other places. They would have eventually. I'm not stupid enough to take him to the Adventurers Guild. They would have eventually ended up like at the Adventurers Guild to sleep. Nero okay. was eventually Wouldn't dropped been, off yeah. at the Magisters. Okay. Conveniently, there's a magic door that leads to his bedroom. <laughs> True. With a okay. lesser with a lesser restoration to make sure he doesn't have a hangover in the morning. <laughs> um. And yeah, the group of you meet up in the tavern section of the Adventurers Guild. Five is in a remarkably good mood that no one understands. Five so, is... what I miss? Why? Yeah, uh, I'm we're so we're. Uh, let's see. We 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 created the rest of the world. Um, that was you. No, fuckers? we didn't. We we started. We need to finish that. We created a lot more of the rest of the... We created the rest of the world that is currently in existence. It doesn't matter. Have, did you guys see that shit that was up in the sky? That fucking yeah, boat? Yeah, from on top of a god's anvil. Yes, and then we went and talked to the airship. And we're going to be on the airship soon. Because we're traveling to... Um, you remember Adolfo, right? He's over at the yeah. corner. Yeah, yeah, over there. Say hi. Um, yeah, no, I remember. Yeah, he's got. He's got a. He has something he needs our help with. Um, there's a fucker who needs to die. Okay. So we're gonna go kill him. Okay. Is he paying us? No. <laughs> Could he be persuaded to pay us? <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Well, I mean, I'm a little short on coin. I was waiting for that question to come up. Selena <laughs> reaches I'll be honest, bag and... I'm flat broke. I'm expecting that if we go to the whole new part of the world, we can market ourselves as people from that weird place that was covered in the abyss. Or rather, the <laughs> Welcome to the World crew. So, I like that. That needs to be your team name now. The World Crew? Welcome to the World. Something like that. I don't know. Workshop it. And so make like... money off of that. <laughs> For God's sakes! <laughs> what? It's just, every time You're Jeremy lying. has started talking, somebody else has started talking at the same time. It's okay. <laughs> it wasn't just you. It was every. It was. It was it quite was funny like to watch. Six times in a row. <laughs> I know it was. It was beautiful. I was like, I, like wonder... I was waiting for like three oh, seconds. Sorry. And no, it's it's fine. <laughs> Selena reaches into her bag of holding, pulls out sixty-two gold and electric pieces, like. 
here, this is more than most people make in their lifetime. Kill him for that. I mean, I'll fuck him up, but... That's all I need. If he wants somebody dead, then he's probably going to want to do it. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, no, we'll... Yeah. Also, I need to borrow some money for, for, for my pack. <laughs> you better talk to Adolfo. <laughs> You better see if he can forward you that payment. <laughs> Wait, what did you need it for? A couple of gold back <laughs> for my bar tab. We're we're adventurers. There is no bar tab. Yeah, not oh, here. Yeah. Never mind. He still pockets the money. <laughs> so you got sixty gold in an electro. All right. So awesome. This is why I largely drink at the Misfits Rest, but I get free Me drinks. Meanwhile, Boldrin is still pondering out that team name that Actrasol put forward. Mm, something a little catchy. World Wakers? Um, no. Five rights down. Welcome wagon. <laughs> <laughs> and shoves yes. it towards Boldrin. <laughs> the welcome wagon. Actually, that one's perfect, I think. And so... What, what do you think? What, what do you think, lads? Are we, are we the welcome wagon? Sure. Somebody's welcome wagon. Adolfo I mean, I feel like that has sinister and ironic implications, and I Five like that. Five down. It also works for murder. Ding, ding. Who's here? The welcome wagon. And then yep. she draws like an axe underneath it. <laughs> well, so it is. Our team's been officially christened. <laughs> We've got Val and Sanguinus over there in the welcome wagon right here. Adolfo okay. sort of standing off to one side. A certainly an interesting name. I will be interested to see who wants to put that on the board. But uh, it is good to see you all here, bright and early, uh, uh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, I believe. Yep. The accent is slowly becoming Russian. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Spanish. It, it goes to Russian occasionally. Anyways. Uh, so, uh, are you all prepared to head out? Yeah. Let's rock this party. All right. Yeah. Uh, I heard. I uh, pardon me for overhearing. I have very good ears. Um, I heard a question of payment. Uh, trust me when I say uh, the man that we are seeking to rid the world of is uh, how would you put it? Filthy fucking rich. Yes, I think that's pro. I I, I I'm assuming that's the case. <laughs> I need my 60 gold back. You will... Uh, I flip one piece back. <laughs> <laughs> you will all be well compensated from his corpse and from his coffers. Oh, good. We're stealing from the man we're vengeance murdering. Yes. Oh, it's if vengeance? he's dead, it's not stealing. It's corpse looting. Uh, the, 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 you call it vengeance, I call it justice. That is not what the prison system says. The, the mute one is correct, and you don't need to worry about the prison system in Luxoria. I have connections. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Well. All right. <sighs> Let us so be off. The uncomfortable groan of, groan of the nominally good lined character, and yeah, let's go. We will be off. And I will sing you tales of the welcome wagon and of the lands of, Ilo of, uh, of uh, Ilanora, which we'll soon be coming into. I'm going to go quick up to my room, grab some cotton so I can stuff my ears later. And Oh, you've, you've heard him perform. He's, <laughs> he is yeah. a damn good singer. He is a yeah, no, wonderful singer. He's, he's a good know, singer. Corbin just doesn't have a taste do for the music. Whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to sleep. Let's go on a flying boat. So, yeah. you all get now. your stuff and head up to the boat dock, which you see is currently being worked on by a group of dwarves who are reinforcing the, the temporary dock on top of the rangers and also having a conversation with high captain uh, with the high captain of the rangers as to where it will be moved to once the ship is gone. Um, but you guys are all loaded up. Okay. Uh, Adolfo uh, goes over to the captain and pulls out from his bag a large sack of coin and hands it to her. For your troubles and for the passage of myself and my allies. Um, which she takes it, looks, opens it up, 
you see this sort of shining reflection of gold. Closes it, cinches it. That's enough. And <laughs> heads up onto the ship. Uh, Baldrin looks around. Is it just us, Adolfo? The rest of your team not coming with? The rest of my team have business elsewhere and are going to be scouting the uh, nominally terrestrial manner. They're actually going to be going around the mountains and to some ports that may or may not exist in the peninsula. Uh, my goals are much faster. They will eventually meet me in Eleonora, but uh, I would like to get there quickly and settle the sand, as it were. That's fine. More stabbing for me. You don't stab. Sometimes I stab, okay? Let's not find out whether or not Selena can stab anyone while we're not with any enemies. Thank you very much. I'm not gonna... What kind of bloodthirsty monster do you think I am? Don't answer that. <laughs> I mean, I, I know you're not a bloodthirsty monster. <laughs> See? We fight plenty of those. Corbin's on, our, Corbin's on my side. And Corbin's judgment can always be trusted. <laughs> I find I've, I've I find known that, this kid for like two weeks. I find no. that statement to be quite questionable, Selena. I Okay, I'm that's not right my best argument. Here, Dolpha. <laughs> we still haven't left yet. <laughs> that's not go. my best argument to date, I acknowledge. <laughs> but I, I don't I'm looks, go find a room. Adolfo anyway. looks over at Corbin. Hey, look at who you travel with. I think my statement says sound still. <laughs> yeah, let's go figure out how this airship thing works. So, you all climb up onto the airship, and it, it's like sort of a mass... You, you've all been... You've all seen at least fishing boats. It's massive in size, much <laughs> much larger than those. And there is a prison barge that occasionally goes up and down the river from... Uh, uh, from... Um, uh, Twin Rivers to core and back it's bigger than that too uh this thing is sort of galleon sized um, and i'm assuming the airplane didn't employ airships because no we didn't really need them no one in the airplane needs airships <laughs> um you fly yeah because they fly everyone there flies you fly it's also pretty easy to fly because there's wind everywhere yeah and clouds that are solid like even if you don't fly you can hopscotch your way across um <laughs> but yeah and you all sort of settle on and, and uh so are any of you are all of you staying on the deck to watch or are you going are some of you going under uh under decks to your rooms which have been to decide you've been shown where room. they are I I'll am going to down watch. to claim the best room. You are provided a room. They're all the same. <laughs> I still pick the best one out of them. All right. Uh, all of your rooms have portholes as well, so you can look out and see. Um, like sort of just the, the area itself. Yeah, I'll see from there. Aldrin uh, wastes no time getting to work on his next project. <laughs> well, those of you that are on the deck, Adolfo being out there as well, you see these blue crystals begin to glow with energy and as they do uh, the, the sort of the ship the, the ship crew pulls up the gangplank and secures it you hear the, the sort of the, the standard uh, uh, ship calling calls going out uh, you know back down the hatches everybody get everything ready um, no hoisting the mainsail because there's no sail there's no main post either um, there it's sort of like a ship without a I mean it's a ship without a sail um as the crystals gather more energy, they sort of begin floating freely of their cons of their confines. They're sort of strapped to the ship, but wh previously th where they were hanging, they're now floating. Um, and as they float, the ship creaks and groans and lifts off with them. Uh, and you all feel the ground leaving underneath you. Which is a fairly unsettling feeling, even for those of you that can fly naturally. Um, the the sort of the unnatural nature of this makes it feel kind of weird. Adolfo is on deck, compo you know, rapidly composing some sort of ballad to the airship uh, and the the people on it who are taking off, um, and it lifts off. You can all look down, either through portholes or over the rails, and see core diminishing beneath you. 
um, what were massive buildings very quickly becoming smaller, with the exception of the Tower of the Gods, which still continues to stretch on above. And using that as sort of a guiding point, the ship turns. You feel the crystals hum as they change the direction of the ship. Uh, the Captain Firelight, sort of at the helm, which has a wheel, but she's not touching it, um, maneuvering some crystals that are located on the, like, sort of the center spokes of the wheel. Um, as she does so, the crystals continue to vibrate, turn the ship, and once it's set, they sort of lean forward. And as they lean forward, you feel the ship flowing with them, crossing over the air and leaving Core behind. Looking down, it l you guys are moving at a very rapid pace. Uh, as you saw, somebody who does fly, you're flying very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, f like, dragon levels of fast. And dragons fly really fast. Yep. In fact, as you go, you see uh, a large, ancient brass dragon... Uh, who's sort of flying over the forest to the uh, over the forest to the south, sort of do a flyby, looking at the ship in curiosity as it does so, uh, before returning to the mountains and the forests, which presumably are its hunting ground and lair. And the ship takes off. You head south. Uh, as the ship sort of locks in place, um, the captain comes down. And addresses whoever's on the deck. Right. Well, it's about a week's journey from here to Eleonora. Uh, at least it was a week when we made it initially. Uh, we'll see if it still is or not. Apparently much has changed. With the removal of this uh, abyss, I believe you called it. Oh. Should be an adventure for us all. And as... The ship flies, and Adolfo begins playing a lovely ballad that he has composed. You all hear the music coming down, filtering throughout the ship as you attend your various needs and desires of the best room or the next project, or just polishing your armor and nifty new spear. That's what we're going to call it an end for the evening. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.